is God of War Ragnarok worth all of the insane hype that it has been getting? Well, we're going to discuss that very thing today because we've got some insane things to say about this game, I gotta say. So without further ado, remember if you do enjoy today's video, don't forget to leave it a nice, a thick, and juicy like as always. Of course, if you enjoy this kind of content and you want more like it, be sure to hit that big red 60 subscribe button right underneath the video. Also gotta thank my channel members. You guys help make these videos possible. If you don't join, get access to the exclusive perks that they get, and be sure to check out that blue join button. Anyway, let's begin. First things first, let's talk about some gameplay, most of which something you're going to be doing a ton of considering the title is God of War. Uh, that's going to be combat. Combat in this game is honestly just as great as the 2018 title, but even right off the bat with the same weapons, the Frost Axe and the Blades of Chaos, you know, the weapons from the end of the previous game, you come right out in this one and with those same things, you have these new skills and abilities to really take advantage of, which is such a nice little wrinkle that they've added into to the gameplay, things like being able to attack from above. There's a lot more verticality in this game, so being able to grab enemies and throw them off ledges is something that you can do now, which I think is really, really awesome, and it adds so much, even though we are still using the same weapons that we had at the end of the previous title. It's just a nice way to make something familiar also feel very fresh. The next thing I want to talk about, of course, Atreus. Atreus has grown up a lot, and he's got some new abilities that as you go, I think you'll uncover and you'll find them not only very interesting, but also very useful. Some of them you'll get pretty early in the game, but Atreus is definitely a lot more useful in this title than he was in the last one. You're just kind of mashing square to distract the bigger enemies. Speaking of enemies, the enemy archetypes in this game, especially with the boss fights, I'll say. You're obviously generic enemies are generic enemies, but with the boss fights in particular, and I've had several just in the first few hours of the game. It's really impressive how they've been able to provide so many different boss fights with so many different experiences and how interesting it's been. It's been very fun to be able to engage in these. It felt like in the 2018 title, one of the few criticisms of that game was every non-story related boss fight seemed to be the same giant troll thing. And it was just either fire or ice or some kind of different elemental, you know, aside from like the Valkyries and whatnot. But even then it got a little bit repetitive in terms of those fights. And in this game, I've encountered several different uh, fights that whether it's kind of like a borderline, like a, a really tough open world, I guess you could say enemy versus like an actual legitimate boss fight. They've all been able to provide something completely different. I really enjoy that, the enemy variety has added a lot to the feel of the game and it's really just starting out. I'm excited to see if this changes and it expands even more as the game goes or if it's just, you know, they're kind of throwing everything at you at once and then it just kind of, these are all the ones you're going to experience. Good luck. Either way, the variety has been very good and I am happy with that because it just keeps combat interesting. It keeps you thinking. With how deep this combat system is, it is great that they're trying to make you take advantage of the full breadth of gameplay opportunities that you're going to have with it. The next thing I want to talk about, speaking of full breadths of things, is going to be Traversal. Now, Traversal is quite similar to the 2018 title. There are some new things involved, the way the linear worlds are laid out you end up you get like a compass and you kind of have some more choices as to where to go you'll have side objectives that you can go and accomplish which i do highly recommend because they can offer you some pretty nice rewards trust me go do them not only that but they add a lot to some of the characters they add more story to them their backstories things that they've done in the past and so lore that's all fine and dandy um as far as the traversal it's you know you're climbing animations it's running it's sprinting. There are some nice new puzzles and being able to use things like the Blades of Chaos to traverse a little bit more or using like the ax to free some of the, like in, in the initial parts, Fartelheim. You'll use that to free some geysers. I mean, I don't think that's a spoiler at all. One thing I will commend though is of course, you know, puzzles are a part of traversal, getting through certain areas. I am very impressed at how well the puzzles are made. They are not just brain dead simple. Uh, they really make you use your head and they really make you look around and you do feel rewarded for doing it. You will pick up different rewards by going around and completing these puzzles. And I really do enjoy that. It makes me feel more encouraged to explore, even though again, it's not a full open world experience. It's much more of a linear experience. It does make you want to go around and explore and find out more about the places that you are going to and the places that you are in that moment um it's just it's really nice and satisfying to do now we're going to get a little bit more into the technical side of things i will leave some story stuff for last 
Um, I probably should have put this at the beginning of the video. The story stuff is going to be last, and I'm going to try to keep it as spoiler-free as I can, but I will put up a disclaimer for that in case you want to go in completely blind on the story front. Now, the first thing I want to talk about as far as the technical side really has to do with the graphics. If you've watched any of the promotional material for this game, of course, you know that the graphics are incredibly stunning. But it is very different watching a trailer on YouTube on your phone versus having a full scene play out in front of your face on your monitor in glorious either 1080p 60fps or 4k 30fps. I'll get a little bit into that whole debacle, uh, but the detail that they've gone to to be able to emphasize certain things, whether it's an emotion, whether it's creaking rocks as you're climbing across something, just the, the level of little details that they go to in this game is just so impressive. And the power that they take advantage of with the PS5, if you're playing on the PS4, I don't know how different it's gonna be, but at least if you're on the PS5, this game will look magnificent to you. And I mean, for the PS4 users, listen, Ghost of Tsushima looked amazing as far as details went. God of War 2018 looked amazing, even with the details, so you're probably not getting gypped that much, but for someone who is on the PS5, you are in for an absolute joy in terms of detail, whether it's the different materials on armor that have this intricate etching on it, and it's just so interesting to look at, whether it's the particle effects when you're using the Blades of Chaos or you're fighting some enemies in an area or something like that. You really get to take in some amazing visual details. The emotion in some of the scenes. Again, I'm probably not going to put it on screen just because, I mean, I don't know, maybe something from really early in the game. It's just amazing what they've been able to pull off and the level of detail that Sony Santa Monica went to to really show everything that this game has to offer in a visual sense. It's stunning to look at. Now, I could talk all day about how beautiful the game is, but let's talk about some of the performance settings. Now, as you all know, there's plenty of accessibility settings that are really nice to have. I'm not really going to get too much into those. Uh, just know that if you do need some kind of like, for example, I'm red green color blind, so I do use some of them and they are very good. They're extremely in depth and it can help a ton with being able to see certain things in the game. If you need to highlight Kratos in complete red, you can do that. You can do that with a lot of things. It's really cool what you can do with that. But I want to talk about things such as performance mode versus graphics mode, because I feel like that's very important to talk about. Now, number one, I tried both modes, and honestly, there is no resolution on Earth that will ever make me play at 30 FPS. So I've been playing in 1080p, and to be quite honest, there is... I, at least for me, I don't see any reason to play in the 4K mode. The details still shine through extremely well in the 1080p mode. It's still a stunning game. You're really not missing out on much. And my God, that frame rate is smooth as butter. I have zero issues with it at all. I turn off most of the motion blur and I turn off all of the film grain in the settings and it looks incredible. The only reason I leave some motion blur on and I know in like FPS games, it's a sin to have any motion blur on, but for single player games, I feel like it does add a little bit to the cinematic effect. I don't know if it applies in cutscenes, but at least in gameplay, it keeps things a little bit smoother. It looks a little bit nicer, again, just for purely cinematic purposes. I leave a little bit, but film grain, I take that completely off. I don't wanna see any film grain. I don't think it looks as good with the film grain on. So if you want my opinion, I'd say go 1080p 60 all the way. I'm not sure what performance settings are on the PS4 version, but go for frame rate is all i'm saying now one thing i do wish that and this applies to a lot of the ps5 exclusives one thing i wish that they had gone for in this game horizon forbidden west all, any game that comes to ps5 i want a 1440p mode i don't know if they'll be able to get 1440p and 60 fps and i know the ps5 only recently got native support for 1440p, but I would love to see that get patched in, even if it's, I don't know, 1440p, 45 FPS, I don't know. I, I just, I wanna see something that gives me that blend of quality image with a decently high frame rate. That's all, that's all my, if you can do 1440p 60, I just delete the 1080p mode at that point. It just, it feels a little bit dated playing in 1080p, but uh, at least that's what I thought before I started playing the game. Now I'm playing it. It looks fine, but just for the principle of it, I guess you could say, I would love to have a 1440p 
uh, mode, considering it is 2022 and 1080p 60 is very much like a 2013 standard. So, just saying. Lastly, and this is going to be the story part of it that I'm going to get into. So, if you want to go into it completely blind, now's your time to turn it off. I am going to try to avoid spoilers, so don't worry, I'm not going to get into any major plot points going for the story. I just want to talk about my general thoughts of it so far and whether or not it's worth your time. Okay, that, that's your time. The story so far has been extremely interesting. Uh, the first couple of hours pack just as much action as they do mystery. Right off the bat, you're going to find some answers to things that the 2018 game left you with. But those answers are also going to leave you with a lot more questions, which is fantastic. And it's honestly the only way they really could have made this game worth your time. As for main story stuff, I am going to leave it pretty much at that because if I go any further, just know it's action packed and things get going very very quickly and again you're gonna have some satisfying answers to things from the end of the previous game you're gonna have a lot of questions as to where things are going from there though so buckle your seatbelt. now as for the more intricate part of the writing the character writing is phenomenal i cannot emphasize enough how much i adore these characters like after the first hour and a half I felt attached, and just all of them were just, they're, they're great. Just know that. There's going to be moments where you feel like you should be uh, in the middle of a boss fight. You're going to be wanting to just get in. You're, like, ready to fight with Kratos and get this thing going. And then you're also going to bust out laughing in the middle of that. And then go right back to ready to fight. It's just incredible how they pull everything off and it all fits tonally there's nothing that feels out of place i'm sure if i went through the entire game i could nitpick some of it but so far just 10 out of 10 on the character writing i cannot commend that enough and there's also characters that have grown since the last time we've met them i think it's pretty easy to say that about atreus but just overall i feel like the characters have grown they've evolved it's you can feel that they've learned from their journeys previously and the time in between the 2018 game and the start of this game there's definitely been a lot happening and it's just incredible it. writing so that being said as cold as nimble winter is uh it gets hot pretty darn quick so buckle your seat belts that is my early review on god of war ragnarok is it worth your time absolutely this game is freaking amazing uh if you can get a hold of it <laughs> i highly recommend it i am having a thoroughly good time with it and i hope you do too let me know down below if you are playing god of war ragnarok what do you think of it so far i'd love to have a conversation with you so let me know down below what you guys think and i'll see you guys in the next video